Mediterranean Marinas Part 3 looks at the options for keeping your boat in a sunny port that's also viable for an extended visit in the winter. In that way you can spend all of June, July and August in the sun and then come back again in the winter to spend some time aboard in the relative warmth of the Mediterranean sun, like today. I ended up uh, part two in Malaga City, which doesn't really have any marinas. But just f a little bit further along the coast to the east, um, the next possible place is Vélez Malaga, or Puerto de la Caleta, which is about a 60 euro taxi ride from Malaga Airport. It's a well-run, secure marina that occupies less than half, a third maybe, of an important fishing port. The fishing part of the uh, port is busy and active and consequently the water in the marina area is not always that clean. It's got a travel lift, a little boat yard, a shop um, that sells items for fishing boats and therefore has stainless steel fittings at a very low price. Possibly lower quality stainless than in a chandler's but half the price of a proper yacht chandler's. The security is excellent behind locked gates and there are fences and there's a 24-hour presence in the Capitanery. It's, it's an odd place. I mean, it, just outside the marina is a busy main road, um, which is the coast road into Malaga. And a few miles down that road is a resort called Torre del Mar, which is very popular with German tourists. The immediate surroundings are a bit scruffy, although there's a supermarket directly across the road from the marina and a couple of street restaurants that do fish barbecues that are delicious, um, as well as some street cafes which are fine. The barbecues are on the beach next door to the marina. The office staff are friendly and welcoming, but the marineros are all local ex-fishermen and not always that helpful or graceful or charming even. To keep a 10 meter boat in Caleta is going to cost around 4,500 euros a year and the maximum length is 10 meters although visiting boats are up to 12 meters probably not a place that's as attractive in its surroundings but a good secure base for a boat just past Neha further along the coast is the commercial port of Motril with its really excellent yacht club the real yacht club Nautico de Motril now Montreal is an active commercial port and at the very far end, away from the entrance, is the Yacht Club Marina. Despite everything I've said about Spanish yacht clubs in the last video, this one's a real delight. They're all enthusiastic boat owners and it's a really well-run marina with superb marineros to help you park. Which is necessary around midday when the uh, local wind is um, normally on the beam, so it's not that easy going astern in. The clubhouse is not glitzy and the bar restaurant is perfectly reasonably priced with delicious meals. It's really the perfect Spanish family sailing club and if you were to become a member and keep your boat here, well, I think you'd be very fortunate. As I said, if you arrive about around midday, there's frequently a strong crosswind and that does make parking difficult. It's possible to anchor off the marina and wait for the wind to drop in the evenings. We visited a couple of times and spent some lovely evenings in the bar and restaurant. But you need a few words of Spanish. But it's a really nice place. Motril itself is an important city, but it is a couple of miles inland from the port. Around the clubhouse there are shops and most of the facilities you need. The nearest airport is Grenada, Granada, sorry, the nearest airport is Granada, which does not have access flights to the UK. So the realistic alternatives are Malaga, which is 87 kilometers away, or Almeria, which is 103 kilometers away. A taxi from Malaga airport would probably cost you between 120 and 160 euros, and it takes uh, well over an hour, hour and a quarter, maybe an hour and a half. It's possible to get a, a bus from Malaga bus station to Montreal for 10 euros and that takes a couple of hours down the coast. Uh, just be aware that Spanish buses, with Spanish buses it's essential to book in advance either online or, or at the bus depot. 
It is around 30 miles from Motril to Almirimar, which in my opinion is one of the nicest and certainly the cheapest marinas in all of southern Spain. On the way is the harbour of Adra, which has a small um, upmarket fishing and sailing club. It's a major fishing port with a 100 ton travel lift, 150 ton travel lift even in one corner. And um, the Yacht Club Marina is rather more upmarket than Motril. For members, an annual berth for a 12 metre boat is around 5,000 euros. It's just 12 miles from Almirimar, and I confess I've only been into Adra once and have no memory of the place whatsoever. It's so close to Almirimar, which has everything, that I can't see a reason for trying to locate your boat there. Almirimar is a huge marina complex surrounded by apartments and houses, together with a supermarket and smaller grocer shops. It has an excellent boatyard where you can haul out for the winter, and every sort of repair can be made by local experts. There's a first-rate British triandlers um, called Almar Centro Nautico, with prices similar to the UK. It's owned and run by Brits. It also has one of the very few sailmakers in southern Spain, A and C sailmakers who also do upholstery to a high standard at low prices. Colin, the sailmaker, is highly skilled, and if, if you're in other ports, you can use an overnight courier um, to send sails to, out to Colin El Mirimar and for him to send them back to you. To my house in Ronda, for example, which was 100 miles away, the cost by overnight courier for a sail was 15 euros. About half the restaurants and cafes and bars in El Mirimar are British owned and the rest are Spanish owned and run. There's a large contingent of expats living in the complex and a lot of retired people as well. My personal favourite is an Irish tapas bar called McGowan's, who cleverly do UK tapas. Or, I mean, all the other bars offer Spanish tapas, España, tapas España. But in McGowan's, you can have fish and chips, egg and chips, curry, which is absolutely brilliant, and dozens of other tapas. The deal is that you get a free tapas with every drink you buy. We normally ended up having, uh, we normally ended up uh, not having tapas with our last round of drinks because we were already full. Very good deal. This place is not the full-on tourist destination of Ben Al Madna, but it is a partly British enclave. The majority of the tourists here are Spanish folks. There is a great beach beside the marina, there's boat sails, and interestingly, up in the hills beyond the town is an Italian-built cowboy town where Clint Eastwood began his career making spaghetti westerns. It's now a tourist destination, it's absolutely worth, worth, worth a visit. It's, uh, I've really enjoyed going there. The nearest real town is um, El Hico, and that's a bus ride away. The local airport is Almeria, which is served by Ryanair, British Airways and others from various UK airports. It's around a 60 euro taxi ride to the marina. To keep a 12 metre boat here, the annual rate is 3,500 euros. And they do a winter rate, if you just want to winter your boat there, of 600 euros. And the boat will be well looked after. They're really professional capitanery and really excellent marineros. I've lived there aboard for the winter and I've left my boat there for a winter. I've hauled for anti-fouling, I've hauled for repairs and I've enjoyed the British and Spanish uh, restaurants, bars and cafes to excess. In my opinion this is by far the best place for keeping a boat in southern Spain and as a base to sail from. Just around the corner, further into the bay, is Roquetas del Mar, which, like Andro, is basically a fishing port with some facilities for pleasure boat run by the local yacht club. There's nothing wrong with the place, but it's more expensive than on Miramar and without the facilities, and somewhat lacking in charm. Um, it's about the same sort of distance to Almeria Airport. When you sail along the Almeria part of the coast, you'll see nothing ashore but vast sheets of plastic. The 
plastic greenhouses. The temperature here is constantly around 18 to 20 degrees in winter and a lot hotter in summer. This is the greenhouse capital of Spain. And much of the fruit and vegetables sold in UK supermarkets comes from Almeria. That's the end of the Costa del Sol region where the line of latitude is more or less the same as Gibraltar and where you can reasonably expect to sunbathe on Christmas Day, as I hope to in four days' time. Capo de Gata, on the other side of the bay, is the headland that marks the heading north of the Spanish mainland into France and to where it snows in Marseille and rains a lot. So, immediately round the corner from Capo de Gata is San Jose Yacht Club Marina, which again is very well organised and a helpful place. It's only 25 kilometres from El Maria Airport, so a very inexpensive taxi ride for about, I don't know, 30, 35 euros. The marina has everything from fuel to haul-out facilities and hard standing. It's a real yacht club, and I suspect the annual rate of for a 12-metre boat would be around 5,000 euros a year. It's situated beside the town, and if you're coming from El Mirimar across the bay, round the Cape, it's a really useful place to overnight. Not a place to enter at night or leave in the dark as the bay is crowded with fishing pots and indeed nets. Even in daylight it can be challenging. There are a few British tourists here and in a way it's one of the most attractive very Spanish holiday resorts in the area. If you wanted to keep your boat here permanently then you'll probably have to join the Yacht Club and that would probably involve a fairly substantial entrance fee and an annual subscription. But being so close to the airport and in a town, it's a real possibility. The next possible port to leave your boat in is the important fishing port of Garuccio, which is about 30 miles north of San Jose. This is a, a very odd marina and a commercial port which has somehow never taken off. I visited it several times and there's always space and parts of it have still not been completed. There's also a yacht club in the port which might explain the marina's lack of customers. It's a very good place to stop if you're on your way to Cartagena. The annual mooring fee for a 12 metre boat is just over 3,000 a year, 3,000 euros a year, which is very attractive. The nearest airport, unfortunately, is Almeria, which is a 165 kilometers away so the taxi fare is going to be around 120 euros. Personally I think the distance from an international airport and the lack of easily accessible facilities explains the really annual really low annual fee for the boat in Garucha and there are more facilities much more attractive facilities only a little further north in the shape of Cartagena, Torremolinos and Alicante which I'll look at in the next video. There is one more port just 20 miles north of Garucha and that's called Aguilas and I confess I've never been in there. It's another marina owned and run by Yacht Club. It's around 120 euro taxi ride from Almeria Airport and a bit more to a bit more than that from Alicante Airport. Whilst the marina appears to be better serviced by far than Garucha the Yacht Club is pretty upmarket and I think you would need to speak a little Spanish to be happy here. I'm impressed with how close to the town it is and the other facilities um, around the marina and Yacht Club seem to be very good indeed. It seems to be a Yacht Club that prioritises boats and it's clearly orientated towards Spanish nationals rather than expat boats. In the next video, I'll start to look. I'll start at uh, Cartagena, which is a very good option for keeping your boat in, and then I'll cover all the marinas as far as Denia, which is opposite the Balearic Islands. One of my books is called Cruising Southern Spain and the Costa del Sol. This has got many more details about the marinas and so on, and it's accessible from GentleSailing.com along with my other books. If you feel like subscribing to my channel I'd be grateful as it helps with YouTube promoting it but if you don't it really doesn't matter it's not important anyway 
If you have been watching up to now, I'm grateful. Thank you very much. And I hope it's been of some interest to you. See you in the next one. Bye. So far, French Canal Route to the Mediterranean has sold over 2,700 copies. And the, the gentle sailing route to the Mediterranean, that's down the outside coast, has also sold over 1,850 copies so far. If you want a copy of any of my sailing books, then they're available as instant downloads from gentlesailing.com, all one word. Or if you want my articles and descriptions about sailing, uh, you'll find them at michaelbrandt.com.